Hey guys, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make a double exposure in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Kelvin Designs. My name is Kelvin and I design and that's why it's called Kelvin Designs. Click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get all these episodes as they come out and click up here to get the source files for this episode and every other tutorial that I do for free. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make a double exposure photo using Photoshop and we're going to take a photo of a portrait that you can see here and a photo of uh, nature that you can see here and put them together to get this. It's a pretty cool effect. It's actually really simple and it doesn't take very long. So let me show you. All right, so to start and get the free raw files for this episode, uh, go to my website, kelvindesigns.com, click on free lessons. And if you don't have a, uh, a login, just sign up for free. And if you do, just log in and go on the episode. And uh, once you're logged in, just click on the download source files and it will download this folder here. And in here you have bone.jpg and mountains and forests. So go ahead and open those into Photoshop. And as a little note, uh, in double exposure, what's very common is uh, take, mixing a person with a photo of nature. So um, I've gone ahead and picked two of those. And uh, this subject, uh, as a note, works much, much better as a profile photo compared to face on. And that's because the detail here uh, near the outline really helps sell that mix. And all right, so the first thing I want to do is actually get a little more detail in this photo, almost like an HDR. So I'm going to go ahead and go to camera raw filter. And in here, I'm going to increase the clarity, open up the shadows, and bring down the highlights. And that kind of makes that fake uh, HDR. Um, we could also overexpose it just a touch because it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, uh, it's a little, we can open it up a little more. Um, I want the whites to be a little whiter, so something like this. Not too much, but uh, I like that. And that's pretty good. Okay, hit OK on that. And um, all right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is let's just double click this and call this subject. I like to name my layers. Now, uh, what you want to do is turn this black and white. The subject, um, you don't have to make it in black and white, but it usually helps uh, greatly. So go to the uh, uh, this layer adjustment down here and click on black and white. And the default works pretty good, but usually it's recommended to use the uh, high contrast blue filter. So let's go ahead and do that for now. We can always come back and change that if we want to, but that looks pretty good. Okay, and then um, make a clipping mask by holding on the uh, Option or Alt key down in between those. And you see now this black and white will only affect the subject layer. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is um, import this photo. Okay, with the nature. So just uh, click and drag it, bring it over here. Now it did bring it under this clipping mask, which is not what we want. So just bring it above there and hold on the Alt again so it releases that clipping mask. And you want to take this uh, layer, let's just call this nature, and uh, turn it into screen mode. All right. And so now um, we can basically position this and see how that works. So that's pretty good. All right, so uh, I'm going to zoom. Uh, zoom in a little bit and then zoom out just so that I can have this in my pasteboard. And we're uh, looking at how uh, these two are going to get mixed together. Okay, so um, I'm going to just let's just put this on, let's just put this on multiply for a second. I want to mix these two and I want to use the natural decline of this mountain for the edge here. And then on the left side, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that in a second, but um, you can't really see the outer edge of that. To see it a little better, you can just turn down this mask. This, sorry, not, this, the, not the mask, the uh, opacity of this layer. So now we can actually see the mix in there a little better. We'll bring it back in a second. Okay, so uh, with the nature, uh, I hit, hit Command-T for a free transform. And remember that we want to use this as the decline in the forehead up here. Okay. So um, hold on the Alt and Shift key to kind of uh, maintain those proportions. And you want to get, I'm trying to get a little more detail um, in here. So something like this, okay. Maybe a little bit, even a little bit smaller, something like that. Okay, and I really want to use this decline. I'm trying to align that. It could be a little bigger, something like this. Something like that is not bad. I like that. I wanted the trees as the beard, so trying to keep that kind of level. So maybe a little bit smaller. 
something like that. Okay, that's pretty good. So the beard, beard here with the forest, and then the uh, the uh, mount using the mountains as uh, the area of uh, the skull, which is kind of an interesting mix. So something like this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Now there's a couple of masks that we need. The first mask we need. So we go back down here and let's bring this back to 100%. And we can go ahead and hide this. The first mask we need is the mask of our subject. So to do that, very simple, go to the uh, quick, quick selection tool and just click around here in the white area. It's pretty simple, something like that. And then uh, let's include this little black bar, which we actually don't want. We're going to get rid of that. Okay. And then uh, hit uh, Command Shift I or on PC Control Shift I. Or if you just want to go up here and select and hit the inverse. So that inverse is selection. I used to have the background selected. Now I have the subject selected. Now we want to edit the uh, edge of this. So uh, we're going to go ahead and click the uh, select and mask. And um, I've heard of quite a few people complain about this new tool, but it seems to work pretty simply. Um, you want to hit the uh, that second tool down there, which is the refine edge brush tool. And holding down the control and alt, you can select how big by going left to right and how hard by going up and down. So I want a soft brush, and I want it to be the, about the size of what I consider the fuzziness to be. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Command plus or control plus, and let's make this a little bit smaller. All right, so now I'm gonna go in here, and I'm brushing with that refine edge brush tool, and it's basically determining, I'm saying, well, in this area, please recalculate what is transparent and what is not. Pretty simple. Okay, a little bit here by the uh, eyelashes and the uh, eyebrows, and then here by the mustache, here, and in the beard. And that's pretty simple, pretty easy. Okay, I'm not too worried about the shirt. We can always come, come back and clean on that. Hit OK, and here we go. We got our selection. Okay, now I don't want the mask to only mask my subject. I want it to mask the nature as well. So how do I do that? I'm going to select all by holding down the shift key and then click on the group tool and I've now made a group and we can we can call it, we can actually leave this as group one. And in group one we're going to create a mask out of that selection. Alright, so now this mask of the subject is being applied to everything that's inside. And you can see that in the background. I actually don't really want the checker box so what I'm going to do is create a new layer back here. Whoops, I'll do that. Put it to not inside the group, below the group, right here. And um, click default colors, make the foreground white. Let's just uh, fill it with foreground or just white. There we go. That way I can really see the edges a little better. Sometimes it's hard to see the edges uh, when you use the uh, checkered. Oh, it's important to name, so let's just call this white background. Okay. Now, so we have our subject, we have our subject mask, and uh, there's another mask that we need, but how, and I, I need to mask something else out of this, but I do not want to affect this mask in case I need to use it again. And so uh, let's go back in here. Let's just hide this subject for now. And, um, oh, in, in screen mode, it'll obviously not show anything underneath. So let's just, let's just go back to normal for a second and bring this out just for one moment. Outside of the group, I want to get a mask or selection of the sky. So to do that, once again, using the uh, quick brush uh, selection tool, let's go in here and pretty simple, make that selection. This tool is pretty, pretty magical. Okay, all right, so that's that horizon line is pretty much all I need. Oh, I don't want that in there, so I gotta go in there, hold on the Alt, let's make this smaller, Alt key, Get rid of that, so that fixed that. Pretty simple. Okay, that edge is pretty pretty clean, so I don't have to do too much work. I invert the selection again. Okay, I bring that. Now I'm gonna put my uh, nature photo back inside, and you see that selection is in there. Uh, however, I do not want to edit this. So how do I create another mask without editing this? Very simple. I go ahead and make a new group. Put this inside it, so it's one group within the other. Go in group two here and create a mask. All right. So now this, everything is being uh, masked out uh, that's inside this group. 
uh, if I to see that transparency effect, I go to the nature, put it back on screen as we had it before. So now we have that mix again, which is what we want. Okay, so now our basic masks are done. And just to reiterate, uh, I didn't want to uh, mask uh, or destroy this mask. So to not destroy it, I created another group, added another layer mask. And this, you can go on and on and on and create more and more groups with masks. Um, doing it a couple of times, not too complicated. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is there's some areas that we want to reveal uh, the nature. All right. So to do that, very simply, because this is in screen mode, create a new layer, put it underneath the layer, the uh, nature. We'll call this reveal nature. And in here, very simply, hit D for default colors, which means black in the foreground. Go to your brush tool, and let's do an opacity of 20. Something like this. Change the size of your brush a little bit. And basically, by brushing black on this reveal nature, because this is in screen mode, it's going to reveal the nature and essentially hide the subject. So I really want the top of these mountains to be perfectly clear, no mixing uh, with the subject. All right, so I'm just brushing the top. And there, that's pretty clean. I don't really want the ear, so I'm going to hide that as well. Something like that. I like that. Okay. And then, okay, that's that's pretty much what I want. Um, and then there's the uh, other way, which is I would like to be to have some areas where the nature is hidden and we reveal more of the subject. So in that case, I go and create a mask on the nature, and uh, with uh, black in the foreground, because black will uh, conceal, I go in here, and again, very light brush, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of mask out the, uh, the mountains area in here. And you see that here in the mask? I'm basically con um, hiding the mountains, so I'm revealing the eye. I want that a little bit in the back of the neck, just so that we can see a bit of the hair come back. I like that. So that's pretty good. Something like that. All right, the other thing uh, I find a little distracting is the uh, the coloring right around here by the mustache. It's a little green, um, and I kind of want it to be desaturated, almost just black and white. So I could do one of two things. The easiest is probably just to uh, conceal or, or hide the uh, under that. Go to 100%. I could just hide the forest in there, but that feels like I'm cheating. It's just going from one to the other. So I want to keep the forest in there, but get rid of the color. So to do that... I create a uh, another layer, and we'll call this desat. Let's do desaturate, and we're going to just put this in color mode. This is a kind of a, a lazy way of desaturating. I'm in black in the foreground. I'm in color mode, and let's go back to 20% opacity on our brush. Okay, and then I'm going to go in here and just brush over here, and you see I'm, I maintain all the trees, but I got rid of that color, and that's. It's sort of a, a, a lazy way, but effective, of uh, desaturating using the brush. Okay. And another thing that we're going to do is I want to colorize a little bit of the top just to give it a little more depth. I want to warm up the top of the mountains. So how do I do that? Uh, I'm going to create another layer, and we'll call this uh, Mountains Sunset. And let's pick a nice warm color, something like this, almost warmer like so, kind of orangey. Again, this layer goes into color mode again, and opacity is 20, so that's good. Make this a little bigger, and you see I'm just brushing up here at the top, so it feels like there's some some form of sunlight that's kind of, whoops, not too big. It's just at the top there. I, I want to get a little dimension, a little, uh, little more color depth. I feel like it's a little too yellow, so I'm going to hit uh, Command U, which is a hue saturation, and let's bring it a little more towards the uh, orange, so a little to the left before see it has a bit of a green tint and then here it's a little more magenta so that's nicer hit okay on that and uh another thing is i want the uh, nature to kind of disappear down here in the shirt i just want to reveal back to normal so uh pretty simply go into the mask of nature and using the gradient tool and just make a gradient from here to say here and there we go. So it just it added that in the mask. So I'm masking that out of the nature uh, part. The last thing I want to do is I want to get a little more skin tones in uh, the face here. Very, very light. 
And remember, I have this adjustment layer that uh, changes the black and white. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a brush. Again, 20%, very light. Whoop, undo that. Make my brush a little bigger. And I'm basically going to, in this, in the mask of this adjustment layer, mask out a little bit of that. So I'm, I'm bringing back some of that color. I really want it in the eye. I want it back. I want that, that blue eye to be coming coming through. I don't want the red around it, so uh, I'm going to uh, uh, basically re-reveal it by painting white around it. Something like this. So that blue doesn't really come through too much, so go back to 20%, and let's just do something like that. That's pretty good. Okay, so uh, might be a little too strong, so once again, X um, changes foreground to background, and just get rid of some of that. But there you go. We have our double exposure, um, and uh, we we edit it really how we want it. We can position it. I can change it back. Uh, also, another thing is remember we wanted to try out different ones. The default one would have looked like this, so it's a little higher contrast. Um, arguably, maybe better for some senses. But if you get the darker skin tones, the mix has a tendency to work a little better. All right, so uh, one other step that uh, I like to do is taking the nature, uh, the nature image. Let's just Command J to make a copy of that and bring it right behind the white background. Let's delete the uh, layer mask on this one, and uh, we can go ahead and hide the whites. When I go here, uh, let's actually bring the white behind it. That way, it's just in front. Leave that there. Okay, this bring this not to screen but normal mode, and let's bring it to twenty percent opacity. And let's do a nice little blur, a uh, Gaussian blur, and 200 is pretty good. I'm trying to get a sense of that color in there, which is kind of nice. So something like this. And um, you could even, if you want to, give it a little more uh, a vibrancy. Go to the uh, image, adjust, vibrance, and bring out some vibrance or some saturation. You can see that before and after. It's just slightly, slightly more colorful. And then a nice thing to do is create a new layer. And make sure you have uh, white in the foreground as your brush color. And brush. Again, very light. Very light. 20%. And big brush. And just give it a, a couple strokes to, uh, on some areas of the profile, that help uh, kind of distinguish it from the background. I try not to do too much up here. So I'm going to undo that. Just, just a, maybe a touch, because otherwise it looks a little more Photoshopped. So this is a before the glow and after. It helps kind of build that. So the uh, background kind of kind of helps put the whole thing together. So I like that. And there you go. There is your double exposure. All right, guys. I hope you liked this episode, and I hope you learned something. And if you did, don't forget to like the video and share it on Facebook or Google+. It really helps me out. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next episode.